Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Twilight Princess. I'm Nye. And joining me today is uh, the leader of the free company I play with in Valhais 14, Medif. Howdy do, everyone. So I decided that uh, up, that I needed other stuff to talk about. And uh, Medif has also beaten the game. So I figured it would be kind of fun to have him join, especially given that we are going into uh, one of the dungeons people dislike the most. Now, at least it's not Ocarina of Time. You know, I've actually... You, you've watched, like, speedruns of that, right? Oh, yeah, it's ridiculously fast there, but they and, use the hover... Yeah, the, the speedruns use, like, hover boots and just break break it entirely. Yeah. Oh, I tried so doing that stuff, and nah, I can't do it. One day I would love to learn, you know? So, uh, I went back and got, um... Did I time that right? No. Um, I went back, got myself some more water bombs, so now we have a full complement of regular bombs and a full complement of water bombs, and uh, I'm trying to break into the temple here. There we go. This place is, remember, sacred to the Zoros, who are not noticing me at all throwing bombs at the walls. I think the walls don't count. I think it's the inside. It's the inside? As long as you don't blow up the walls inside the, there, because like, they got all that nice architecture. Is this, is this La Mulana, where I'm just going to get, like, zapped if I try to blow things up in here? I don't know, but I haven't played that game in a long time. I'm watching uh, <laughs> I'm watching people play the second one, and it's been enjoyable. Oh, that's right, the second one. Don't you play as, like, Lamenza's uh, daughter or something? Yeah, you play as his daughter, and you play... It's the, um, like, the second backside area. So you play in Eglana, and oh, and God. this is where all of the like, you you know how in La Mulana a lot of the um, there were all of these like civilizations that were referred to, but that was about it. Yeah. So in uh in Eglana, this is where the survivors of all of the previous children are actually there. So there are actually giants that you will meet who are still alive. You will see some of the Olympians, things like that. Oh, nice! It's been kind of it's been kind of cool to watch, and you actually have to uh, talk to them. Um, the person I've I've talked to has like met at least three Lords of the Dead. I'm a little worried about uh, what the hard mode reward will be because I don't remember. I don't know if you did Hell Temple in La Balana. I but... actually... So so here's the thing. I never actually ended up really playing it. Ah, so okay. I, I've i watched multiple playthroughs and speed runs and such of the game. Um, but didn't have an incredible amount of interest in actually playing it. That's At fair. some point, I want to fix that. But I think I got I got all the way up to Am Amphis Bana. I beat Amphis Bana. I got... And I was following one of the uh, speed run um, routes. That's fair. So I got up to uh, where was I? I got up to Temple of the Moon, and uh, got the axe. And about there, I went. Okay, well, you know, I think I'm done. I think That's I think fair. it was probably because I wasn't solving it myself. I was following someone else's route, so kind of a lot of the gameplay there wasn't there. Yeah, a lot of the fun from La Milana comes from just trial and error and. You know, just kind of doing your own thing and hoping it works, and then crying when it doesn't. Let's see, does this guy count as a red potion? Red chew jelly, replenish eight hearts. Yes. yes, awesome. So yeah, that's uh, those are the chews, guys. I can't remember what all of the chews actually do because we also had access to green earlier, and then we had access to uh, there's this is I think this is black, and I can't remember what black does. I know that a uh, yellow acts as lantern fuel. Yeah, yellow is lantern fuel. Red is red's a red uh, potion. healing. Blue is originally it would have refilled your magic meter, but, but I don't they think we have magic in this. Yeah. Yeah, they removed the magic meter, but it's still there. And if any of them combine, they become purple, which is just useless. Oh, okay. I yeah. don't remember that. <sighs> so don't mix your colors. <laughs> 
I really, uh, I, I was thinking about trying to do some of the, like, speedrun glitches for Breath of the Wild, or not Breath of the Wild, for Twilight Princess. Mm -hmm. Um, because one of the things that you can do is you can skip the first bomb bag entirely, and then, uh, the speedrun thing is you go do the, um, instead of buying the bomb bag from, uh, from Barnes, you just go quick, you quickly do the river minigame, and I think you, you, you die in it or you quit, something like that. And then you just take the bomb bag. You, you don't actually ever, ever give, it, give it back. And that's how you get the bomb bag uh, to do uh, Water Temple. Because the bomb bag is required. Yeah. That's kind of funny, though. I was thinking about doing it, and then I decided that, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just going to do this legit. Hey, man, I saw you die. How are you feeling? Oh, that never happened? What the hell's a reset? I don't care. Here's a bomb bag. Get out of my head. Don't blow it up again. Yeah, well, she, uh, I, I, forget the, the, I forget the whole thing. We just did it. It's like, uh, the Zora, who's her friend, is like, yeah, she just gives out any old junk to people who are doing stuff. So even the Zora is just sitting here throwing shade. She's like, yeah, she just gives you junk. You know, she's not actually giving you anything worth a damn. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here like, I can carry 30 more bombs. This is worth lots. Ah. <sighs> It feels really weird to go up and break jars and things like that and just get nothing out of them because they were meant to contain hearts originally. Hey, point. More bombs. That's... Okay, so now we get well, to go I... into the temple proper. In a way, it's more accurate this way, though. I mean, people aren't just storing hearts in, but in these things. And this way, it just makes Link look like a destructive butthole rather than... Hero hey, hey, hey. there are everything. rupees in there sometimes. Sometimes, but not all the time. You've seen, you've seen that, uh... <laughs> you've seen yeah, that. I've seen it. Yeah, the one where <laughs> Zelda reaches into the pot and Link just like, what wizardry is this? Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, you know what's fun? Shooting bomb arrows at random enemies that want to engage you in combat. It's, it's the great note button from the sky. Well, the bow, but, you know. Fighting, uh, did, did you do that to, to beat, uh, King Bulbin the second time? Oh, yeah. When he, when he has the two, uh, the two shields. Yep. It's so good. So easy. It really is. It, it, it's pretty simple. Ah, shoot. I need to find aluminum. Good luck with that. Isn't that generally rare? Well, it's not that it's rare. It's that, well, for people. Obviously, people haven't been following me, but I'm playing Fallout 76 right now. And, uh, aluminum is probably going to be your one resource that you need everything of. Because it's used for repairing, crafting, electronics, sadness. Mostly sadness. I hate Tektites that dodge. I shot a bomb arrow at this Tektite and it said no. Wow, what an asshole. You know they actually lead you? Pardon? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was trying to run past some tech tights earlier as I was going up to uh, Zora's domain, and I was just trying to dodge around them, and the te damn tech tight led me, and it hit me anyways. Well, you know what they say. Well, as you would say in certain fights, mechanic. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Ugh, they won't stop bothering me with that. Oh, what that joke? Yep. <laughs> I, I part of me is part of me is sorry that became a joke, but at the same time, you're not. I'm really not. You relish my suffering. Look, you as a former tank, you should know better. Former, hey, when I get on Final Fantasy after maintenance, my Dark Knight will be sixty. I'll have two tanks, or not sixty, seventy. As I said, I'll former have... tank, you and I both know Dark Knight doesn't count. It is pretty... Well, no, Warrior's the DPS. <laughs> so, I, was in, I was in Novice Network chat, and <laughs> there was this warrior that was throwing shade at both other classes, saying that paladins were wimps and Dark Knights were emo and neither were true tanks. And everybody in Novice Network that plays as a, uh, as a tank... None of us actually said anything, and then someone finally goes, Huh, 
I never thought I'd hear a warrior of all people call other tanks wimps. And I was just like, yes. Yes, that is how that conversation should happen. That's pretty funny. Also, I really, mean, really silly thing when you try to roll up a, pair, a, set of, a flight of stairs, you bonk. That makes sense. You can roll up anything else, but a flight of stairs bonks you. Because it's got edges. Hi, Uku. <laughs> that's that's my excuse. It's got an edge. So tell me I'm wrong. Doesn't Uku and her son look like the boss from Tamtara Deepcroft Hard? Yes. <laughs> Especially because the son does have wings on either side of his head. Yep. Oh god. I just don't like how the stylized markings on them just make it look like gore on nipples. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. I could have lived without those two. <laughs> I mean, I could have done without the gore on nipples myself, especially on the old Gorons. I I want to know how Nintendo got that past the, past the ESRB. They just whispered in uh what's his name? <sighs> I can't remember his name. Why well, can't I remember our patron saint of Nintendo? He passed away a few years back. Iwata? No. I wanna, yeah. They just went up to him and whispered softly in his ears, Rock hard old man nipples. <laughs> and he was just like, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we're doing that. <laughs> well, you know, so you you've heard that uh that Miyamoto for a lot of a lot of his games, um, he takes a lot of inspiration off of things he sees in his environment. So, like, he he <laughs> got he got inspiration for um, like Pikmin off of the carrots in his garden. Nice. So, I don't know how I I, I forget. Does does Miyamoto actually have any any say in Zelda? I, he does, right? I think he's Zelda as well. Yeah. So I want to know what was his inspiration for Rock Hard Old Man Nipples. Like, because someone somewhere on the uh, along the chain made that particular design choice, and I want to know where it came from. Who thought dark, that was a good idea? A very dark and scary place. Uh, more than likely, he went to an onsen and uh, <laughs> just looked around. Pro probably some older guys were doing their fitness stuff, because a lot of them, what they like to do is. They go and before dipping into lots of things, they wash themselves obviously because they don't want to pure they don't want to pollute the water with their dirt. Makes sense. But after that, before they get in, they limber up. Uh, the heat from their gets bits as opposed to sort of like just gravel soaking. So they'll be doing their things like Tai Chi and shenanigans like that. Naturally. And a water pro or Miyamoto probably walked in there and it's just like, this disgusts me. Others must know my pain. <laughs> and thus we got old man Goron nips. I'm still waiting for him to come up with measuring the video game. You, you, you've, you, you heard that, that one of his uh, hobbies is to look at something, guess how big it is, and then actually measure it to see if he's right. Um, Does this work? No. Custom Robo, maybe? <laughs> no, Custom Robo is not measuring the video game. That is something I need to do on the channel someday. Custom Robo is actually great. You know, I've never actually finished finished it. I get all the way up to what I think is the final... Can I do this? No. I get all the way up to what is the final event in post-game, mm -hmm. and I have never gotten a gold on it. I've gotten a gold Ooh. on everything but that final event. That's brutal. Uh, I think in the final event, you can actually use illegal parts. Well, you I think you can... Yeah, you, you can use illegal parts in general, but it's the um, it's the three-on-one is the one I'm talking about. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but there was there were two illegal parts. One was built for speed, and the other one was power, and it was like sweeping melee. I thought there. I thought it was. I thought there was more than that, wasn't there? It's been a while since I played the game, though. No, 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 there are several, but these the ones I'm talking about. There was an illegal part that made you like 
infinite dash almost and another one that was just like raw power but you had no range it was only melee huh. and i just used those no defense whatsoever so it was bringing glass clan into the logical extreme i think that's what i usually did too was if i can if i can hit you i'm gonna take you down in one shot maybe two but i better not get hit otherwise yeah I mean, that's honestly how you had to play it if you wanted gold on a lot of things. Because otherwise it would just take too long or you would take a hit and that would knock you down to silver. There we go. That's the stuff I'm trying to do. Okay. I'm, tr I'm trying to remember how this dungeon works. So, you know, th there's always the joke, goddamn water dungeons, and that the water dungeons are typically the worst dungeons in any particular video game. Oh, yeah. This one was never that bad, though. No. Like, they, they took out a lot of the stuff that makes water dungeons painful in the first place. So mm -hmm. this, but, uh... It's been so long, and some of the dungeon is a little bit obtuse. So I think, if I remember correctly, this should be a key. Yeah, okay. That's the thing I was missing. Man, yeah, I wish I knew how to do a boomerang long jump. Yeah, that uh, I did one of those by accident. Uh, the fourth time I played through this dungeon. So for those who don't know, uh, the boomerang long jump is a is a speed runner technique that you use the gale boomerang, and because you're allowed to uh, lock on to anything, including like walls, you throw the boomerang out. And you tell it to lock on like four times to one point, five times to a second point, or the fifth time to a second point, and it makes sure the boomerang is just out for an extremely long time. And then you can actually lock on to the boomerang itself using Z targeting. And when you do so, you can do a uh, long jumping attack where you know Link jumps to a target that's a significant distance away from him. And uh, doing that will actually allow you to uh, bypass a lot of gaps that you otherwise would not have access to. So that gap I was looking at a moment ago, um, I could have actually made the jump without having to raise that bridge. Another fun thing to note is when you first enter the Water Temple Dungeon, if you do a uh, boomerang long jump, what will end up happening is... You can actually use that to clip into the ceiling of the boss door, of the boss room. Yeah. Because uh, there's no legitimate way to get on there, so there's no physics. You fall right into the the uh, the boss's. I want to call it the waiting room. Yep. So so you can go right to him. And most of the speedrunners they do this without the Zora tunic. Like you never get the Zora tunic. So you're going underwater and fighting a boss with without uh like underwater breathing, and that boss is not short short. So there is a severe risk that you're just gonna like just die to it, just straight up. Yep. Unless you kill him extremely quickly, which of course they're good at doing because that is what they do. They do things fast. It's but like uh, that'd be beyond me. <laughs> it's like they have skills. I just, I can't, I, part of me would love to do something like that, but I just do not have the wherewithal to practice to that extent. Like yeah. at, a, at a certain point for me, it's like, okay, I'm done. It's one of those things that's nice to, nice to dream about, but actual application, oh boy. Yep. How did you do this? I don't know where that other... I forget. Do you remember the name of these things? The armored things? Um, metal assholes. <laughs> you know what? That's 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 enough. Okay, I'm trying to remember which room I have to go in. There's the carousel room behind me. Oh, these jerks. Ah, uh, yes. The jelly asshole. I don't think I can actually do anything to it right now. I believe um, in order to deal with him, I need the dungeon item. Uh, no. I believe you can get him with thrusting attacks. Nope. No, thrusts. That nope. is a thrust. Um, 
what yeah, he, he's invincible. In fact, he's dancing in there and he's making fun of me. Try throwing a bomb at him? Nope. Oh, wait. That did work. Aha! A sufficient application of force is all that's required, it seems. It didn't actually help because that door is still locked, but okay. At least now they can't tease me that much. Okay. So we do have to go back to this room. I mean, we, we need we need the dungeon item at the yeah, end of the day. Probably. Which I believe this should be a key. Hey, a key. Did you ever notice that there's this one key in, uh, I believe it's the first dungeon, the forest dungeon. You get it out of a, like, a man-eating plant, and that key is shinier than all the rest of the keys in the game. I didn't notice the shinierness, but I would assume it's because it's been polished through stomach <laughs> yeah. acids. It's, yeah, it's been, it's been dealing with gastric acids the entire time. Okay, how do I, oh, I have to go this way, okay. So here's the Carousel of Progress. No. <laughs> Just, no. We're not doing that. All of these priceless Zora vases. And I have to break them for the single rupee they hide inside. I don't know, they look kind of dime a dozen on <laughs> Honestly, what 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 type of person hides their money inside of a vase as if it was a piggy bank? That's what I want to know. A very special person. I was talking about this on a, on a previous episode. What, how would you feel about a game where you play as the people who the end is coming? So they're building the, uh, you know, the temples and such for the coming hero. You weren't that hero. You're just the one testing the temple and the traps. <laughs> so you're That's actually there when everything is new, talking to the builders, you know, helping to train the monster that goes in as the boss. Like, and you just test everything. So you still accomplish everything. You still beat everything. And there's probably some sort of boss that you deal that you have to deal with just to make sure that, you know, the coming hero can actually handle it. But then that's it, you know? You you don't actually you're not actually the one. Well what they don't tell you is that there's actually a pile of bodies in the back room just tucked away. <laughs> alternatively All the people failed. Alternatively to the Enders game twist. You know, this was all real all along. You just didn't know it. You did save the day. We just didn't want to tell you because we thought you'd get too self-conscious about it. You were the hero. That is still one of my favorite twists to a, to a book of all time. The Ender's Game one? Yeah, you've read Ender's Game, right? Oh, yeah. By the way, I, I didn't preface this because the book is legitimately 30 years old or something like that. But, by the way, spoilers, folks. Um, so in Ender's Game, you start with the whole, you know, the, the laser tag minigame, right? Teaching kids about, about war and how to, uh, and how to do it and stuff like that. I still can't get that. Damn. I thought the dungeon item was up here. Um, so, you know, you do the, uh, you know, you have these kids who are learning about aiming and tactics and things like that. Uh, inside of this, what is essentially laser tag. And, um... Okay, how do I actually leave this room now? Um, I believe you can fill up the bottom with water from... Yeah, but you have to get... It's, the, it's that switch right there. Um... But how do I get... I'm trying to remember how you, I get Oh, to no, no, now I remember. Yeah, go to the top, and there's another switch that you pull that'll fill up the bottom. And you can slide down there like a water slide. Well, yeah, but I thought you had to have the dungeon now. item to do that. Uh, no, it's just to get back up later. Well, because there's a chest back there that I can't currently access because I don't have the dungeon item. Oh, ladder. Okay, I missed that. Ye. So, you know, Ender does all of this. See, there, there's, the dun there's the item right there, but I need the dungeon item to actually get that. 
Um, you know, you have uh, you have Ender who does very very well and eventually becomes an officer and kind of the leader of one of these um, you know laser tag teams. And they eventually move him on to what they call officer school, along with mm-hmm. several of his subordinate officers. Don't forget, he's also thirteen. Yeah, he's also thirteen and a genius. Yeah. But um, you know, they move him on to officer school, and uh, in officer school, uh, let go, Link. Uh, they basically end up playing uh, Galaga, just a Galaga where they instead of controlling the like ships by direct control, you control them by voice. And so Ender plays as like the Grand Admiral. His subordinates are subordinate officers that give direct, you know, orders to uh you know, to the fighters, and they are supposed to be practicing tactics against the bugs. And just get, kind of getting practice for the war that is to come. And then the book ends and all of the adults are celebrating after Ender you know, completes his final test um, against what is basically a boss, and he effectively just nukes his opponents. He literally drops what is, uh, I believe, effectively uh, a, a fission bomb on them and just eradicates uh, the uh, the enemy world. And Ender's, you know, like, he's not sure why the adults seem so excited about his efforts, until they tell him that, you know, this wasn't a game he was playing. He was actually ordering real troops to do real stuff, and he did just really kill the bugs. And uh, Ender feels sick for a while because in order to do what he did, he forced a single fighter to basically pull a uh, uh, a Randy Quaid from Independence Day flying straight down the effectively the throat of the uh bugs uh defenses straight into their uh like their planet's atmosphere and then when he was in the atmosphere he dropped the nuke and and basically disintegrated the entire planet also killing himself and you know the adults tell him well you know everybody knew this was coming they knew that this fight you know, could kill them, and they gladly gave their lives to make sure it happened, but Ender still feels a little bit sick about it. Uh, because it was his orders that made it happen. But it was still kind of one of my favorite twists of this whole, you know, we we spent this entire book telling you about these games that we play to kind of get these children to the level they're supposed to be, and it turns out this one wasn't a game the entire time. Okay. So, hey, another place I'm not allowed to go. I'm a little bit lost, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to remember where I'm supposed to go. I couldn't tell you any- anything. I haven't played it in, like, ten years. Shit. I mean, yeah, it's 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 been a while. Honestly, half the reason I'm even doing Twilight Princess, apart from the fact that it's a very good game that I enjoy, is oh, that, wait. um... Way better than Skyward Sword. <laughs> uh, I think that goes without saying for most players. Um, half the reason I'm playing is that uh, I want to, you know, max out the game, go and do the Cave of Trials, and level up my Wolf Link Amiibo so I can pull it into uh, Breath of the Wild with me. Fair. Because having Wolf Link run around and do shit with you just sounds like an amazing time. I don't know. I'm. I kind of really want to do um, Wind Waker even more than I want to do this. I I really seriously enjoyed Wind Waker. Wind Waker is really fun. Where do you think? Uh, as far as far as you're aware, where where do you think the the, the um Twilight Princess fits? in the uh, Legend of Zelda timelines. Where Where is this one? I believe this is on... This timeline is Young Link, like, returning to the past and getting Ganon sent to the Sacred Realm. Makes sense. So, child timeline. So what what follows this then? Because I remember there was a lot of thought that 
After this was this... the one that goes into Wind Waker. Um, honestly, uh, with Wind Waker, Ganon was sent to the Sacred Realm, or and he got out. And so the gods decided, no, we're just going to flood Hyrule because we don't want none of that business. But obviously in the child timeline, okay, Majora's go. Mask, then Twilight Princess. And that that chronologically works together in my mind because uh, when, a, when someone dies in the Lost Woods or they die after going to the Lost Woods, they become a Stalfos or a Skull Kid, depending on their age when they do die. Right. And the hero shade is obviously hero of time, like he, he and it's not like you're a recur reincarnation of him. Although going by Skyward Sword, all links are reincarnations of himself. But yeah, they've made case, that very clear for a while, actually. Yeah, because Wind Waker well, said it too. Yeah, but they just finally like stop speculating. This is how it do. But in. Uh, he even goes a step further to show that he's directly related, like, as a grandparent, great-great-grandparent. So, I believe after Twilight Princess, it would, it wouldn't go, I don't really know where I would put it, to be honest. Twilight Princess seems like it. it's more of a finishing one. So it, the next one would be like Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild or something like that, yeah. Yeah. Also, let's hold that there because the game is really trying to get my attention. Yeah. But we've run out of time, so we'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you in a minute.